we're going to make one on here. Yeah. Nice. Here's the scale. Oh, should I push start? Oh, I did. We're already good. We're already here. We're here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Cindy. I'm Christine from Candles and Supplies. Do you like my bug shirt? Oh, that's it's smart. I didn't even think, I noticed. Yeah, yeah I noticed. I mean, it's a dragonfly. We're not trying to repel those because they don't bother you. But yeah, <laughs> today, today we're doing natural bug sprays or insect repellents or however you want to think about it. It's that time of year again when bugs are out. So, mm -hmm. um, I we're in Pennsylvania, so it's been kind of rainy. Every time it rains, the bugs come out. At night, when it gets dewy, the bugs come out. In the morning, the bugs come out. Yeah, I like to go on a hike or whatever. It doesn't matter what time of the day. Bugs correct. are out. So. Correct. Correct. So anyway. Um, normal insect repellents like the ones you find on the market, they contain things like DEET, loads of chemicals, this and that. So even though they say DEET is perfectly safe, not bad for you, this or that, whatever, um, a more natural alternative is making insect repellents or bug sprays with plant oils, hydrosols or essential oils that naturally repel insects. Right, right. Yeah, sense. a lot of those commercial ones too, I mean, they have those type of things in there. They also still have like the citronella the lemon whatever they do the other they repellents, have those too they have yeah. the other stuff in there as well so yeah. but yeah those uh those other things the chemicals that you know are are safe now but then like 20 years from now probably aren't going to be right. safe you know there's one of those things the so. way they market it is like they you should spray them on your clothes not yourself right, right. okay well what if you're wearing shorts and you go outside to read at night and you're getting bit by insects yeah Right. I, yeah. Well, I mean, even that, if you're out <laughs> doing things and you're right. sweating and then like coming through it's your so shirt easy. and everything too, so it's still on you. So anything that shouldn't really be on your skin probably shouldn't really help me. <laughs> sure. That's true. But we are on the natural side, so you know, then it's always there. Yeah. Yeah. So. They make me feel sticky too. When I spray with like, yeah, yeah I, I was desperate and had to use something that I didn't make and that's why we're making these. And okay. yeah, it made me feel all sticky and not good. And yeah. I they didn't actually have, um, a little off topic, but they actually have these uh, bracelets now that I don't know if it's necessarily plastic that they're made out of, but they look like hair like hair ties, and they have like uh, essential oil on them that are like citronella or lemongrass, whatever. Yeah. They're supposed to help. We got them from Hawaii. I don't really know if it made that much difference, but yeah, it's interesting. So could have, right? Right. Could've. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, all right. So that brings us to <clears throat> what's in a natural bug spray. Oh, we're not using DEET. <laughs> we're, not, we're not using any chemicals, any deep. So I chose essential oils and actually hydrosols too that are naturally from plant materials that are naturally insect repellents. So like the first one, cedarwood. Have you ever seen a bug on a cedar tree? Probably not. So oh, it's not normal. Yeah. Oh, so, so these are all plants that are natural insect, not repellents, but insects just don't like them. Barriers, yeah, almost. yeah, because I mean, if a plant doesn't have some type of natural element to get the bugs off there, it's gonna get eaten, it's gonna get right. All so, those think things. about things like peonies or other things that mm -hmm. bugs love because they're all sweet. Well, we don't want to make ourselves sell, smell sweet like so that, so sure, peonies bugs. all over me, right? <laughs> so, outside. what what our intention here is to do is to like use these essential oils or hydrosols to that bugs don't really like, so. Right. Theoretically, they won't be attracted to us. This isn't saying that you're not going to get a, a fly bite or insects or gnats or whatever, or ticks. And we're not making any claims for that or anything like that. We're just saying by using these, um, it'll you know, reduce your likelihood. They're going to go find somebody else that smells better. So not you. Yeah. <laughs> it'll reduce your likelihood. These these really work too. So I, I make these every year. I keep them in my truck. I put them in all kinds yeah. of different bottles. So like this one's very nice. It fits in your purse. I have these for like in the pockets of my truck. Um, I'm going to make bigger ones because we're having a, a banner insect year this year. It's very good for insect harvest. Um, but any different size, you can package them in and stuff like that. Most of our recipes are like four ounces today, so they easily multiply out. Um, and yeah, so what other ones do we have here? Citronella, that's classic for bugs, right? So. Yeah, so, you're, so the recipe has hydrosol and essential oil or both? Correct. So we have a couple different things. So you can just take hydrosols as they are, put them in the bottle, and it's an insect spray, right? They're all, you know, not insect Don't have to loading. do anything for that. Don't even have to do anything. <laughs> it's super easy. Just put them in a bottle. You don't have to worry about mixing oil and water. But the other challenge is when you use essential oils for, you know, any kind of sprays, you have to get it to mix with the water, right? Because oil and water never mix. Your essential oils are on the top, 
and it drives me crazy every time I see something out there like a spray shake before using because they don't use they want to keep it now they, they don't want to use a surfactant or anything that gets it to mix together well then all your essential oils are on the top not on the bottom where the sprayer is right because your, your sprayer goes in the dip tube goes on the bottom so it's drawing up the it's drawing up the product from the bottom, but if your essential oils are on the top, it's not helping you, right? Well, so. and then theoretically still, so if they're not blended into whatever you're spraying, you're still, if they do make their way through there, you're still playing that, spraying that oil directly on you. Exactly. You do anyways. Exactly. It needs to be diluted and everything yeah. like that to be safe. So you don't want to hurt yourself in the process. So, um, yeah. So, so, so hydrosols. Yep. Yeah. Hydrosols, super easy to use. You can use yep. by themselves. You can also use that in our um, recipe that we do with essential oils. You can use that in your water base. I have water in here just because the hydrosols do, they're very aromatic. So if you're doing essential oils and hydrosols together, it's a lot going it's, on. It's going to be a lot. So, um, and if you like a strong smell, like a lot of these do smell really good. Um, so if you like a strong well, smell, strong smell, it's a body spray too. It might work better, right? That's true. Extra, yeah. Extra. Yeah, I've been hiking a few times where, you know, the bugs were just about picking us and picking us up and taking us away. <laughs> I didn't know if I had any. Water. Yeah, yeah. So in that kind of a situation, you might something do something a little stronger. Oh, so you could do two formulas, have like a regular one, and do like extra strength on another one. That's that pretty intense, cool. yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Extreme bug. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I know. I'm really smart. Wow, <laughs> you're really smart. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. You already got two, like a regular and an extreme. Yeah, so you definitely don't need as much sometimes, but it's enough. That's so. true. Yeah, just a little scenario. That's a really good idea. So. Okay. So now we have <laughs> multiple recipes. Right, for extreme. Yeah. yeah. So, so what are we featuring today? Citronella first. So let's go through everything that so we have. Classic you know, citronella candles, bug repellent, the classic right. citronella scent. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. And it smells, um, like I had it, it smells like citronella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't met too many people that just love the smell by itself. I so don't mind it. I don't mind it either. Yeah, I don't mind it, but I don't know if I'd want to all no, smell like I citronella. Want it, yeah. But I citronella is actually a great blender. You can blend it with lots of different things. So yeah. So citronella, we only have in the essential oil. We don't put hydrosol of. We do not. No, just in the essential oil. Yeah. So. And then another one that's just an essential oil is lemon eucalyptus. So you would think when you smell this that it's going to smell like lemons and eucalyptus and stuff like that, but it kind of smells like it smells like citronella. Citronella. <laughs> so yeah, before we got citronella, we didn't have that one before, and right. lemon eucalyptus. We just had lemon eucalyptus. It was very uh, similar. Right. So I don't know how the wrong went. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> it says cedar wood. It's not cedar wood. Here's cedar wood. Here. So there you go. Ooh, I was mixing things up and. Okay. Got crazy. Yeah, I did. So, all right. Next one we have is cedar wood. So, cedar is used for like cedar trunks, this and that, to keep moths away, bugs away. So, bugs are not attracted to cedar. They don't like the smell of it. So, not sure. I never thought about it because there's yeah. like cedar closets for like yep. things. Yep. Hmm. So, and it smells really good. Do cedar, so obviously it's not made out of cedar bark, but like leaves on cedar trees. Do they turn no, they just smell? the wood. Cedar wood. Right. So, the leaves are fair game. Yeah. That would be cedar leaves. Yeah, I don't know. I still haven't seen any bugs yeah. on cedar leaves either. So I, I think the bugs just aren't attracted to cedar. It's not attractive. So, But that's a good one to like bring. It really grounds down like mm -hmm. citronella and stuff like that. It right. makes it makes a little fun. more woody and stuff. So we have the herbal and right. everything. So we have a hydrosol as well. So no, we don't. don't. No? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. I, I lied. I just I'm sorry. Some. I lied. Yeah. No, I lied you first. Okay. Next. Um, that's a good one. Peppermint. Mm. Peppermint, we have both in an essential oil and a hydrosol, so you can use both. Yeah. Peppermint's also very good. It's a very cooling spray, too, so think about this. If you're out sweating and it's hot and you have bugs and you want to be cooled off, peppermint will cool you off, too. So kind of like a, a double intention for it. Great for hot flashes, too. Just saying. <laughs> Anybody's where I am, and it's yeah, very cooling for hot flashes. So I like a little uh, peppermint hydrosol in my water. Too. Yep, so you're... It bugs from the inside. Yeah. Good for your digestion, too. <laughs> um, next, not so great smelling tea tree. We have both in a hydrosol and essential oil. So, doesn't smell great, but it's also like, so think about tea tree. It's very um, antiseptic and healing and stuff like that. So, bugs aren't attracted to it. 
but say you already have bug bites mm, or you have a whole thing. poison ivy or something like that, and you can, by using tea tree, it's repelling the bugs and it's kind of healing other things too, helping heal, yeah. helping to heal the other things. Tea tree is so. usually a lot of like salves and that type of thing. It is. Too, yeah. So. Yeah. When that's you have something good. going on, when in doubt, blend up some tea tree for yourself. So, so that's a good one. This is one of my favorites in the whole entire world, lemongrass. I love, 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 love lemongrass. Um, it smells very good. It's a natural insect repellent, good for digestion. It's very, it's a very uplifting scent too. So um, there's lots of products that are made for like anxiety, depression, this and that, and they use lemongrass in them too. So um, I guess if you're anxious or unhappy about the bugs, use lemongrass, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not a dual intention. So, but I love lemongrass. I grow it every year. Of course, another one of my favorites, lavender. When in doubt, you can use lavender for everything too. It's good. You might not reason. necessarily think of right away as a bug repellent. True. But True. they have those, those lavender farms and all the things. Mm -hmm. and the only thing you see on lavender is the bees, honeybees. Right. Pretty so, sure a honeybee is not going to come and pollinate you though. So um, yeah, but lavender is excellent. Lavender also adds some really nice floral notes to like the citronella and the, the lemon eucalyptus to kind of tone them down. Lavender mix very well with cedar wood, mm -hmm. the tea tree. Um, they kind of ground it and stuff. So yeah. lavender is a great mixer. It is a great mixer. I haven't found anything that doesn't blend with lavender. So it's very good. All right. Next one we have is geranium. Again, so this is kind of rose smelling. So we have the rose geranium. Kind of smells like roses. So this will add. It's not going to be floral. So you're not going to attract bugs or anything like that. But this is going to add like some nice sweet floral notes to whatever bug spray you're doing. So. All these, again, all these are good for bugs. So it's not like there's one particular recipe. It's, you know, what you want, like get these out. We're recommending these, get them out, put them together, you know, like put the bottles together and see what you like. You could even do like a test too to see like which one. So I mean, some of them might work a little bit better than others too. Yeah. So you do a test to see which one works better that you like better. Maybe there's certain Correct. bugs that like don't like certain ones versus others. I don't know. That's true. I'm sure there's maybe there's research in that. I don't know. That's true. So even if you have like one of these, you could use one of these. You could just like last but not least is eucalyptus. Like you could just put a spray bottle in this, spray yourself with eucalyptus. Maybe that's going to be enough for what you have, what bugs you have, whatever's hatching at that moment or whatever. So, um, you know, could be. So, eucalyptus is a very good one too. Very minty, not minty, but very um, camphorous. So adds nice notes to tone down citronella and everything. Too. Yeah. Uh, every time I smell it, what if like when you're like sick and you like yes. feel it? Yeah. Yeah. And like clear it out a little bit. And yeah. Smelling. Yeah. But also very good for bugs. There's never any bugs on eucalyptus plants either. So, so I'll tell you now. <laughs> wonder if koala bears have bugs because they eat eucalyptus. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know either. So. <laughs> All right. Mm, yeah, they say both bamboo and you I have no idea. I don't know. I don't want to know balls. All right. Okay. So, so simple blends. Right. So you can, you, guys, you can use them by themselves, like the hydrosol mm -hmm. by themselves, mm -hmm. or we can make something right. more intense. So, so what you're asking now is like, okay, I don't know what to blend. Easiest way to do that is get some out and see what you might like. So, I know that I like peppermint, lavender. So you can get them out, take the lids off the bottles, kind of smell them together. Put them in front of your nose. Do we rosemary? Yeah. Or is he just here? Rosemary. Oh. No, we didn't talk about rosemary. <gasps> rosemary, too. Oh, I was like, he's just yeah. hiding here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, rosemary as well. Yeah. So you can put them together, see how you like them. Put more than one together. Let's put that out. Let me grasp with that. So it's an easy way without actually blending them to kind yes. of put them all next to That way you're not wasting your stuff. Yeah. 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 You can do this. Yeah. Kind of wave it in front of you. That sounds pretty nice. Yeah. That's a good combo. There's also some other insect repellents, um, like some of the citruses are insect repelling, some of the, the cinnamons, cloves, this and that. I didn't pick those because citrus um, is phototoxic. So if you're spraying yourself going out in the sun, you're going to get a wicked sunburn. You don't want to do that. So I didn't pick those. Um, cinnamon clove, they're very hot oils too. So if you spray your skin, you know, it's very hot. I, there's plenty of others to choose from here. So I didn't happen to choose those just because. So, so this one, I'm going to make a simple blend of just a hydrosol blend of lemongrass, peppermint, and lavender. 
I'm going to put it right in one of oh, these in oh, okay. fancy blue bottles. Yes, going for it, not measuring. Nope, this is the easiest way. I don't. That's true. You if you're just mixing that uh, right. hydrosols. Hydrosols you can use directly it. on your skin. You don't even have to worry about it. So like they're good. You can ingest them. You can do whatever you want with them. So I know this is going to be. Oh, that's nice. A fantastic bug spray, just like it is. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Yeah. Tempted to add something else. Maybe eucalyptus, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna leave it like that for now, and it can just. So that's the easiest. Easiest bug spray to go and just add hydrosols to a bottle, one or more. We have that. Next. Okay. All right. Those. So we don't forget what's back. Yeah. So next, um, I was thinking about, so we have a, a few different surfactants. So what a surfactant does is get the water and oils to mix together, right? So that's what we're going to do next is we're going to so make, if you don't have hydrosols, if you don't have hydrosols, but you have essential oils and you have water, um, and maybe need a surfactant, then, you know, you can do that. So a surfactant gets everything mixed together and you don't see the oils on top and stuff. So I tested out three of the ones that we had here um, that I thought would be good. Uh, the first one is our polysorbate 80. And what this does, so when you mix this and use this as a surfactant, it, it's always white. If you're packaging in like, you know, something like a darker bottle or an amber bottle, probably doesn't matter, uh, may not matter, but if you're doing it in a clear bottle, maybe you don't want it white, it does work very well. And you use this at a one-to-one -one ratio. It's pretty so. though, it like, looks like milk. It does, <laughs> it does. Um, yeah, it's not bad, it's just, yeah. if you want something clear, it's not clear. Um, but I like this because you don't have to use as much of it. Like polysorbate is derived from coconuts, so you know, there's debates on whether it's completely natural or not. To me, natural is something that you pick off of the ground and, you know, and that's completely much, natural. Yeah. yeah. So it is derived from coconuts and stuff like that. So it's, it's fairly natural, but it is chemically processed to become polysorbate 80. It's also a little darker. It is didn't that why really it's matter. White? What? Is that why it turns white? This is from coconuts? Yeah. Oh, no. no. It just, oh. kind of, anytime <laughs> it's mixed with water, it kind of turns milky. So. Well, I mean, if it's essentially, if it is from coconuts and that's like super concentrated, whatever it was, you put it back into... I don't know. I would just, <laughs> okay. It's a theory. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We can go with that. Um, I like polysorbate 80. Typically, we recommend it for bath bombs, not so much for sprays, but you use it as a, at a one-to-one -one ratio. So however much fragrance oil or um, however much essential oil you're using, you use that much. So if you're using three grams of you know, essential oil, you're going to use three grams of polysorbate 80. Easy to remember. Very easy to remember. One-to-one -one ratio. Right? Our next surfactant is our polysorbate 20. So this is the one we typically recommend for body sprays and stuff like that. It's not as dark and it's kind of milky, but a little bit clearer, more translucent. It turns out both of these work, everything's you know mixed in with them and stuff like that. So if you're looking for something a little on the clearer side, um, you can use this. This is like a, a three to one ratio. So for every one part of essential oils that you use, you use three parts of polysorbate. So polysorbate 20. That way it dilutes all that. So the polysorbate 80 is a little stronger as far as its dilution. Higher ratios. number. Yeah, the higher number, yeah. stronger. Um, this is three to one ratio and that's a one to one ratio. And then just for a wild card, because maybe you don't have surfactants or whatever, you have essential oils, you have water and maybe a preservative and stuff. Um, what's a, a common household thing that's a surfactant? I know the answer, but like <laughs> she told me earlier. <laughs> but so I wanted to try it. So regular, I'm not getting paid by Dawn. I wish I was, but regular Dawn dish liquid. I mean, this is, they used it on birds during an oil That's show. That's true, yeah, yeah. they them all. So yes, it does It does have chemicals in there and stuff like that. It's not all natural, but it is, It's. I feel like it's gentle, very gentle. And this you use at a one-to-one -one ratio too. So for however much essential oils you're using, you're using that much. You're cleaning yourself of, too. As you're yeah. using the pump so I was wondering, you know, how each of them felt. I thought like if you used on liquid for, you know, your surfactant in there, is it going to make you feel soapy or bubbly or yeah. anything like that? It does not. So no. wait, I'm going to yeah, spray, spray Christine. Yeah. So that's, you probably wouldn't put that much on, but oh, yeah. The rest of it. So it goes into your skin nice and everything like that. So yeah, she put a lot on there. So it's I did. Not, but but it goes in nice, but doesn't make you feel soapy or bubbly or anything no. like that. It's, yeah, it's, it's not really. Yeah, it's, it doesn't make you feel you dry. No, it just goes right in. in. Yeah. So that was that's kind of nice. 
It does. I mean, I have blue dawn. If you use the green dawn, it would probably turn out green. So it does turn out a little blue. They have um, yellow too, don't they? Yeah, they have yellow. That might not look so good, but I mean, it would look like citronella. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then we'll test the polysorbate 20. Spray that on a different arm. Now, this one actually has more of a slip to it. It does. Yeah. To me, it feels a little tackier. Yeah, definitely yeah. a little tackier. Tackier. I don't like tacky when I'm already outside and kind of Yeah, I feel like I definitely anyway. don't prefer that one. Yeah. I, I, Dawn wins first, but you can try these for yourself. All right. I'm pulling me. And then up. next is the polysorbate 80. It's for your face. No, I say forearm, right? I didn't touch, didn't touch that. Okay. Yeah, so that one is a lot more like the Dawn and is not as not, yeah. not as tacky and kind of absorbs right in. But yeah, exactly. it's definitely a stickiness to the, the polysorbate one. Yeah, the polysorbates are sticky, the Dawn is easy. So you probably have Dawn in your house and you wash your dishes with it and stuff like that. You can also make bug spray. You can use it in your bug sprays. So multi purpose. Yeah, multi purpose. So all right. Well let's make something. Because you don't have any bug spray, right? So we're what should we I only use? have the I have part of a container that I stole from you like last summer. Okay. <laughs> That's where that went. You left it in my house. I'm like, I'm just gonna keep this. <laughs> ah, okay. I've been I was looking for that all weekend. <laughs> I've had uh, well, it for a while. So. Yeah, it's time for a new one anyway, so it's okay. We're doing bug sprays. All right. Should we get so a measuring device here? I have a, a scale here. I have this. Take it out real quick. So you're going to pick what you want, Christine, in your bug spray. So, and then... so are you going to make the extreme or are you going to make regular? Or are you I don't know. Do both? I think I want to do. Yeah, I want to do extreme. You know what I vote? Okay, so let's try this because we did an experiment with this live. So let's do the same recipe in two different sprays. Okay. One extreme and one not. So the difference Ooh, between yeah, 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 so that we can compare. So let's start with the not first. So I don't. Okay. The not extremes. So we're just using water for. Right. Correct. Do we have water? Yes. Okay. <laughs> water here. Okay. So our recipe is going to be, we'll do, um, this is going in an eight ounce bottle, so we're going to do eight ounces. Which oh, surfactant do you want to use? Uh, 80. 80, okay. Let me get you a pour cap for that. No. No? Uh, I'll see it. We're going to trust my spoon. Okay, we'll trust your spoon. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is weigh out your essential oils and hydrosols. So you want six okay. grams. Put, put the essential oils in first, because first we want to mix the polysorbate and the essential oils to get that to all blend together. All right. So if I want lavender for mm -hmm. sure, I'm going to do lemongrass and then rosemary. Ooh, good one. Okay. Yeah. So you want six grams of essential oils, so it's going to so be two, two grams of each, so you put your little measure here. On the scale, we paired it out, yeah. we did zeros. Oh, there we go. Turn the thing to another sheet. It goes faster, I think, if you shake too. So I think I'm all in the area. Okay. It's getting there. We're at one point. Oh, there we go. Two. Perfect. All right. We'll move the side so you remember. Can you, yeah, can you take the people out? Oh, this one doesn't have a pork in it. Perfect. Do you want to put that first? Yep. Getting wilder. What are you talking about? Look at that. <laughs> Wouldn't have gone that well if I did that. Okay. There you go. All the scales. Perfect. I do too. Yeah, I thought like the rosemary added a little bit. That's I don't say brightening, but kind of. Yeah. Like, Stimulating. Stimulating, yes. Mm -hmm. A little stimulating to it. There we go. Six grams of essential oils. All right. Six grams of essential oils. So now how much polysorbate you want to use? Six. One to one. Six grams of polysorbate. Let's tear out that scale, make it zero. Now, technically, you really should measure this in a different, like, weight in a different cup, just in case you're correct. But I'm going to be reckless here, and we're just going to do it all. Do what we say, not what we do. This is kind of a, <laughs> open, yeah, 
probably it's did kind it. of an open recipe. recipe. You're not going to screw it up or blow it apart if you if you. I mean, yeah, if I put too often, if I put or even if I put too much poly in, I could add more essential oil too. Correct. Exactly. But I I didn't. So. <laughs> okay. All right. So. And now we want 182 grams. Do I need to like do a little yeah, swoosh? Yeah, do a little swoosh here. So mix those together. Your essential oil and your polysorbate. The poly is already getting the essential oil to be able to play nicely with the water. Okay. All right. That's good. Ooh, and now good. here's the tricky part because you need to add 182 grams of water, which is eight ounces. That's only a four ounce beaker. So, so we have to do two. Could do that and then yeah, mix them in the bottle. What you want to do is just mix some of them in there. So. All right, so how much should we have said? What do we have to do? 182. So I vote you put your 100, 100 in there. there. Okay. Yep. And then add, add the other 82. You're like clean measurer today. I've done a you lot the scale. of scale measurements. That's true. One practice in scale. Mm -hmm. So see, it turns milky white right away. There you go. All right. See, I'm pretty good. So mix that together, Sue. So actually, 180 might fit in there. Yeah, we'll keep going. Yeah. Bigger, bigger than I thought. I thought it was four ounces, but it must be bigger. It might be four ounces to the thing, yeah. too. Oh no! Wait, how much four ounces? That's a hundred. Yeah, hundred twenty. Yeah, so it's definitely bigger than that. Okay, put it all in there then. All right. Oh, well, you know, I'll do a little stir beforehand. Yeah. Okay. We need another eighty-two. Oh. Getting wild. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Post your questions in there too, because we'll get the questions next. All right. Beautiful. I'll fit in. Stir. And now since we did add the water, we do want a preservative, right? Right. So we are using, I chose the Lucidal just because Lucidal is, um, it, it is natural. So it goes into our natural theme, but it's a, also the thinnest in viscosity. So I didn't want it to be tacky. I know it goes into your skin real nice because we make our face, facial serums out of it and we know it absorbs and everything. So I thought that would be good for this one. So I chose this, but any of our broad spectrum preservatives will work. We just don't want mold, bacteria, yeast, or fungus. So you want six grams of this. Okay. Are you questioning my recipe? All right, there was just a lot of things going on. I was yeah. questioning our bottle size more so than the recipe. Yeah. I think this is six grams, right? Yes. Okay. Mix that in, pour it into your bottle, and you have bug spray. So this is ready to use right away, too. You don't have to wait. It doesn't um, need to cure, it doesn't nice. need to blend. Around. Now, question. Mm -hmm. Safe for pets. That is an excellent question. So, pet safe. Uh, pets generally don't like when you spray them anyway. Yeah. I was thinking more about the horses because we have spray sprayed spray the fly spray. Yeah. Well, what's in this fly spray is not nearly. Bad for them is what comes commercially. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I was like, maybe we yeah. should make our own flash spray. That's what, that was really where my thoughts yeah. were going. Yeah. So we'll do that. We're not covering pets today, <laughs> but yeah. And then you also, I mean, with pets too, some of them are sensitive to certain essential oils versus high and stuff yeah. that we are not. So you want to look at that more. But yeah. I go off topic sometimes because my mind goes. So yeah. All right. There we go. There you go. Easy as that. All right. That's so right. this is the our regular one, not the extreme. So the extreme, we would just instead of though. using the water, 
yeah, we would put the hydrosol in. That's why I thought like the extreme with the hydrosol might be too strong. But if you have a serious bug situation, then there's there's nothing too strong. Yeah. Are you going to make that one too, or should we answer questions? No, I'll kind of it. How are we doing? Oh, okay. So we'll we'll answer questions. Yeah. So we'll do well, questions. Kind of oh, that much. Uh, well, this is fun. All right. Let's see here. Bug sprays are very personal. We've been spending a lot of time outside doing things outside mm -hmm. with bugs. So bugs and poison ivy are our key problems right now. Who's on? Elizabeth from Morgan Essential has just said she posted a reel about her bug line. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, just posted one. Perfect. Look at that. Um, can you provide the ingredients and measurements for this, please? Yes. yes. We will post Instagram gets the uh, recipes tomorrow, and then uh, uh, Facebook will get them in the comments today. And then we'll put, we will do a blog post on it, too, with some more info. All right. You guys are just getting inside information because you are our live stream crowd. All right. Looking forward to this recipe. So first to be in the <laughs> Anika says, looking forward to this recipe. The skeeters have been nibbling me already. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. I know. It's true. Uh, Tammy, I am the weird one. I love, uh, love it by myself. Probably talking about oh, the citronella. citronella. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie also loves citronella. Can you combine tea tree oil and peppermint together? Yes. That's actually a nice blend. Cool. Yeah, yeah that's combo. a good blend. Yeah. Tea tree also blends nice with everything. So it's a little medicinal smelling on its own, um, but it, it blends nicely with everything. Um, Holly says, do we go over the base? It's so not really a base if it wasn't right. like the water or the hydrosol. Yeah, the water, distilled water would be the base. So, yeah, yeah, that's the, the biggest component. Numbers, yeah. So. Um, post that recipe. Yeah. Connie says, hey, ladies, got here late, so you have to watch the replay. Have a fantastic afternoon. Um, Ronnie said she make a bug repellent bomb. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, was the hydrosol you added at the end? What was the hydrosol that I added at the end? That was water. Yeah, it was the water, yeah. yeah. But you could add hydrosol instead, so absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, what was that? Yeah. So that's our bug spray. We yeah. encourage you to make bug spray. Don't get eaten. You don't need to. So make bug no, spray. Natural bug spray. Yep. Super easy. Yeah. You don't really have to make it. You just have to yeah. Hide one of those hydrosols. I think around. it smells good too. Like I, I don't mind it. Yeah. 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 I think it smells really true. But you, you know what you put in it and stuff. So yeah. So we're just going to continue to fill these bottles. So we have bug weapons. <laughs> we won't be eaten. So. All right. Uh, and well, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. We'll see you all next week. So thanks for joining us today. Let us know, post in the comments if you make the bug spray, let us know how it worked and stuff like that and what you put in it. And, you know, that way uh, everybody else knows too, you know, the entire world. So <laughs> thanks for watching everybody. Right. Have a good week. Bye. We'll see you next Wednesday.